Hi everyone, thankful to have you here. Tuesday the 16th, a beautiful day in the neighborhood, still below average temperature wise, still some more of that to come. And still talking about uh, that upper level low and everything else that's kind of combining to give us, or someone else, <laughs> A lot of moisture off to our east that's kind of just spinning around there, not getting enough juice to get into the viewing area. But that's going to change. We do have some shower chances and warmer air and a pretty normal weekend in regards to temperatures, sunshine, and a lot of other things to talk about. More on your forecast. The City Council of Sagersville met last night. They addressed several issues that we'll discuss this evening. An ordinance pertaining to rental properties and their being unhealthy uh, environments for a variety of reasons. Also, yard sales, an ordinance on those uh, discussed and approved and at least drafting an ordinance of that effect. And a lot of other news, a couple of road-related things to talk about tonight and, of course, some other news and information. The University of Kentucky did announce today, which we've already seen other colleges announce similar plans, and I think that's going to be kind of a norm for a lot of folks to adopt they are planning on having in-person classes, in-class classes, classroom classes, if you will, this fall. Their school uh, will start August the 17th, which is a week ahead of schedule, and then they will not have a Labor Day break or a fall break, uh, and they'll be out by Thanksgiving, which is a similar schedule that we've seen other colleges adopt. They're also, of course, implementing some other procedures and uh, things of that nature, COVID-19 related as well. The students will have to be assessed for the coronavirus before they can actually come on campus. They'll be provided with uh, some small items of PPE to get them started. And COVID-19 testing will also be made available to all students and staff. And some common areas also will be closed. But classes on UK to start August the 17th. Also from the University of Kentucky, Kentucky football for the ninth time eighth or ninth time i believe it is will play on a thursday night and that's going to be their season opener if everything goes as planned right now uh, kentucky is going to take on eastern michigan for their home opener season opener and that was set for saturday the 5th but remember the kentucky derby is going to be running that day so they have of course offset the first uk game it will be a thursday night game a couple of nights prior we hope it goes on as scheduled. None of us are going to be there to see it, but hopefully we'll all be able to tune in. The Sagersville City Council met in regular session last night. One of the first items of discussion, <coughs> my apologies, was the first reading of the $1.2 million city budget with final insurance, as they saw an increase of $14,000 go up in their premiums, and other figures to be provided to the council by the mayor before the second reading with Mayor Shepard last night saying that the city, like county governments, will be seeing as well, they have learned, some COVID-19 financial relief with the CARES Act, getting some reimbursement before the year's end. I plan on the prisoners being working, or the yeah. inmates being working for all summer, now having to contract that work out. But uh, CARES with uh, COVID-19, uh, I specifically uh, contact the KLC and they're going to pay the contract work we do. So anything that we get done more than all that's going to be paid for with them. So we, have to take, we pay for it first and then they'll reimburse us. But that won't be till December. We, won't have, we don't submit that until December 30th. So it will be coming out of our money up to them. So. Later, the mayor asked the city council's input on a rental property ordinance to add penalties or stiffen existing penalties to unhealthy and perhaps unlawful living conditions for rental properties within the city limits of Sagersville. The problem I'm having is we have rental properties in the city that's probably not fit for people to live in. Uh, we have rental properties in the city that we're having to go on drug bust and all this stuff two or three times. I um, asked Jeff maybe to look into it. He looked into one in Lexington. I'd like to have something if, if we get complaints, like the health department gets complaints, I, the health department doesn't have the, the ability to shut them down either or close them. But if we go in... Can't condemn it? We can't condemn the health department. Can't condemn it. Right. But I went to a house, and I'll just give you an example. On Combe Street, about a month ago, had eight to nine people living in a house. It had three feet of sewer, raw sewage, underneath the house, running into the street and over the hill. 
Now these people live in this house and they're paying five hundred dollars a month rent. It's ridiculous. You know. And I think we need something. I don't know something if, if that and, and, and it seems like the same people that are dealing the drugs, we just we arrest them, they come back, they get out, they bid again. You know? If we can do something we can say if you get a landlord, if you've got a renter that's got two convictions on drug dealing, if you don't put them out, we're gonna shut you. You know, shut the flavor down or the them out. I think that's you know, I get I get part of hearing you know, you can't you're not done that before we do stuff, but the well, courts try. are not set up. The jail can't take them, you know, they're too they're overcrowded, they're putting them back out, they're going right back, they know we can't do nothing to them. They're doing the same thing, same thing, same thing. So I don't know if there's a is that a legal way to can we do that, Jim? Well, I mean no, I sent you that ordinance from yeah. like that the Lexington yeah. has basically that in their code enforcement uh, section uh, that does uh, Exactly what you're saying. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, I, you know, I don't want to zone. They have codes. code enforcement. They enforce their codes. Yeah. And we're not asking to do a code enforcement. I guess we would, we would just do it as an ordinance. But I don't, I don't see why we couldn't. But I think, I think, I think it needs to be done. It's a health and safety. It's hard to see seeing people living in filth, and these landlords just say, well, you know. After that and some more discussion, the council asked City Attorney Jeff Lovely to draft an ordinance to that effect. Later, David Gardner with the Sagersville Water Works spoke of a proposed I&I project, an inflow and infiltration project, in regards to replacing the old clay sewer lines on Broadway Street. While he requested the city be the grant applicant in hopes of obtaining a $1 million grant to cover half of that cost and then possibly obtaining some other funds at a later date to cover the majority of the other half. And while before the council, Gardner also suggested an ordinance, an ordinance requesting that anyone who has the sewer system available to them be required to connect or hook up to that sewer system with the caveat or two that they grandfather in any current acceptable septic systems and then disallow any new septic systems to be constructed in areas where the sewer was available. All voted in favor of that ordinance. And one of the last topics of discussion was from the mayor discussing yard sales allowing them, of course, in lawns of private homes, but banning them in one particular portion of the city and then allowing them to be organized in another. What I was recommending, and I'm wanting to fix something, where on the first, second, third of the month, anybody out of the city that wants to have a yard sale can have it at the city park. So that's the only place. I am not put it in every place in the country. And I want to ban yard sales from Restaurant Road. I don't think we should have them up here at this time. People come through here, traffic come through here, the traffic's too congested, and it's it just looks bad. It's you know, and I'm all for yard sales. People have the yard sales, but it's dangerous. Now, we had a lot of calls last year, so you know, I, I just want to get your all's opinion on it before I get there. You talking about Ramey? No, I'm talking about no, the no, city park. No, 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 we got <laughs> Well, the reason I say it, we just had a discussion about this, and we've got. A rule that we've been going on for a long time. There's no commercial activity mm -hmm. other yeah. than. No, I'm talking about the city park cross and the fire department. And after some input from the city council on the subject, all were in favor of having the city attorney draft an initial ordinance to that effect. In some other announcements, Mayor Shepard announced that they'll be spraying for mosquitoes this week and then reminded everyone about the unfortunate cancellation of Community Day and the majority of the 4th of July, with the fireworks still to be held on Saturday, July the 4th, with the mayor and council coming to the realization that the Heritage Day Festival would also have to be canceled as well. Heritage Days. Uh, I'm 99% that it won't be happening. Uh, I just don't, uh, I don't know what the governor's going to say, but... Um, I know some of the pageants uh, uh, the Miss Kentucky canceled this year. Uh, they told uh, Jenny that if she wanted to have just a local pageant sponsored by local people and have them use the Miss Kentucky name, that they wouldn't qualify for the Miss Kentucky pageant. It'd just be a pageant. And I know Tanika called and wanted to see if they want to do one live stream. Uh, and as far as I'm concerned, they can do the pageants wherever they want to, but I don't think. We're going to put it on. I mean, I just don't. I just don't. I, especially at the down to the cabins where it's not enclosed and you can't control the crowd flow. 
you know, I told her, uh, I think I told her that she could find her a gym or something, she wanted to live stream it. She could live if she wanted in, you know, the parents. But it's going to be hard to keep parents, grandparents, everybody wants to come in. Right. So, so I just, uh, if, if it's canceled, it's just canceled and they can, they can go out on their own and do whatever they need to do. And my apologies, I do want to add for the audio there, that meeting being held in the McGough County Health Department conference room to allow for better social distancing and the air conditioning system overpowered my camera's microphone. Uh, I spoke with our video tech and should they have their next meeting there, we'll be able to have a workaround and some better, clearer audio for you. Again, my apologies. I'll be right back. Dr. Jason Zimmerman at Highlands ARH, the healthcare system of Appalachia. Come to Parkway Pharmacy in Sagersville and get your prescriptions filled. Your over-the-counter medications and immune system boosters all from the safety and comfort of your own vehicle, either in their drive through or with their new curbside service. You can also call ahead or just download the MyGNP app, that's Good Neighbor Pharmacy, and refill and manage your prescriptions right from your device, helping you and yours stay healthy and safe. Parkway Pharmacy in Sagersville, 349-4400. All Pro understands that we are all just trying to make it through these most difficult of times, and they want you to know that they're here to help with any repairs or projects that you need done. Big or small, doesn't matter. They've got 0% financing for 18 months and long-term financing if you need it. If you need anything from a new gutter to a new house or a new garage, call All Pro Gutter Works and Construction, 349-9999. There is never a good time for a breakdown. They will happen, and your car at some point is going to need some repairs and maintenance. And Black Smoke Performance is open and here with professional, fast, safe service. And just in time for warm weather, they now have certified full air conditioning, diagnostics, and repair to keep you cool in whatever you drive. Black Smoke Performance, 349-8785. Appalachian Wireless, this is Bobby. How may I help you? I'm visiting my sister in Lomansville this weekend. Will I have service? Of course. We have several towers in Lawrence County. Appalachian Wireless, this is Megan. Where's my nearest store? I'm in bright shade. That would be our store in Manchester. Would you like the address? I just moved to Pineville. I'm sure you don't know where that is. <laughs> Will I still have service? Yes, ma'am. That's down in southeastern Kentucky. We do service your area. When you call us, it's as easy as calling your friend or neighbor because we are you. We are Appalachian Wireless. I'm Hal Rogers, and I approve this message. He fights for the mountains, for life, and for our president. He's Congressman Hal Rogers. When the world seems shaky, you need steady, proven leadership that delivers. Relief for workers and small businesses. Holding China accountable for what they did. Getting our economy moving again. And fighting the opioid crisis. That's Congressman Hal Rogers. Pro-life, pro-Trump, and pro-Kentucky. There was a two-car crash earlier today in McGoffin County, which makes it the third I have reported in just the past two days. This two-car crash resulted in one individual, a driver of one of the vehicles, being taken to an area hospital by ambulance. That driver out of the vehicle upon arrival, emergency personnel initially refusing medical treatment, but after being further evaluated, was taken by the lifeguard ambulance service to an area hospital for minor or non-life-threatening injuries. There were two cars involved, as you can see, one vehicle exiting Kelpatton Branch, the other traveling on Burning Fork in the direction of the junction of Burning Fork and 114 at the new red light when the two collided as one exited Kelpatton Branch onto 114. The accident was handled by the McGough County Sheriff's Department. The McGough County Rescue Squad also responded. A couple of road projects to discuss this evening. First, Senator McConnell's office announcing that he's been able to help secure more than $55.1 million to finish, essentially, all proposed, with the exception of 114 from Sagers with Prestonsburg, all proposed portions of the Mountain Parkway expansion project at 11 miles in Wolf County uh, to the west of Morgan County. He says he has secured the funding to finish completion of that project. No start time or completion time or anything of that nature given as of yet, but the money, he says, is there. And here, a little closer to Sagersville, specifically on Restaurant Row, starting tomorrow, a major slip 
landslide, if you will, is going to cause a traffic pattern change starting tomorrow. And because of the size and nature of it, it's going to last about three weeks. To be a little more precise and visual, the slip headed east, as my camera is here, is to the left of your screen. You can see the earth has slid off of the hillside and over and touching the bike path there to the left of your screen. And if we stop and take a look from directly across 114, you can kind of see the hillside that has slipped a lot of the earth making its way down and literally touching in onto the bike and walking path, which puts it just a few feet from 114 itself. Now, this is not a small slip and not a small job. You can also see the two large trees there at the very top of it, which also pose significant issues. And as a result, they say that it's going to take crews almost three weeks or so to clean this, address the situation, make the necessary removals and repairs, and then return traffic back to its normal flow. So starting tomorrow and for a period of three weeks, the far right westbound lane on 114 will be closed pending this work. Next, your community calendar brought to you by McGoffin Farm Bureau. And it starts with this just in from the Lakefront Church of God, the Water into Wine Food Pantry at the Lakefront Church of God. Their Senior Commodity Day is this Thursday, 1230 till 2 for those on the Senior Commodity regular list. Waiting list clients can be served from 2 till 3. That's at the Water into Wine Food Pantry. Senior Commodity Day this Thursday. And also from, as I told you last night, Marlene Howard at the McGoffa County Senior Citizen Center. Their commodity food boxes will be distributed this Thursday. That's also 1230 to 230 at the McGough County High School where they get their new drive through service ongoing throughout the rest of the pandemic. And it just allows you to simply pull up, stay in your car, just put your name uh, largely written on a sheet of paper and in the passenger side windshield, and they'll take care of you. Either set it in the back of your truck, the back of your car, whatever works, whatever is easiest, and it will make it a lot easier on our seniors and all those there. If you can volunteer a little bit, you got a little time tomorrow, go up and spend it with them at the high school, 1230 to 230. Very rewarding. Uh, and you'll get a bit of a workout, I'm not going to lie. Some exercise there. It's a good win. It's a win-win. We'll leave it at that. Free sports physicals at the ARH Sagersville Clinic here in Sagersville behind the Sagersville Subway for the rest of this week through Friday and next Monday through Friday, 8 until 4. Call 349-6500 for an appointment. That's Dr. Scott Arnett's office and that of Amy Ward, nurse practitioner students who are now getting back into the groove of things a little bit at a time in regards to basketball and high school football have to have a physical, and they're doing them for free at the ARH Sagersville Clinic. And free is the keyword, one of the keywords for our community calendar, because that's just exactly how much announcements like these and birthdays and anniversaries are here on your news today. Obituaries nightly brought to you by the McGoffin County Funeral Home, and tonight they tell me of the passing of 85-year-old James Blackie Howard of Sagersville, who passed away on Sunday. Blackie is survived by son Rick Howard of Sagersville, a daughter Debbie Harvey of Owingsville, and one daughter-in-law Jackie Howard, who was married to his, of course, son Russell Howard, who preceded him in death. Blackie is also preceded in death by his wife Clara Jean Howard. Graveside services will be held in his honor tomorrow at 1 o'clock from the Toy and Delphia Howard Cemetery at Lick Creek. The seasonal shop is open and they're still doing curbside pickup so you can call and place orders and they'll still bring them out to you. And inside you'll find all new merchandise throughout the entire store, all new spring and summer women's clothing from Charlie Page and Mud Pie, accessories, jewelry, shoes and bags too, casual outfits for every day or special occasion outfits and dresses. And if you've been home a lot and really want to freshen up your decor, they have so much to choose from and they're happy to give you any fresh ideas that you might need. And just in, a large selection of Simply Southern and Candleberry at Fraser's Prater Drugs Seasonal Shop in downtown Sagersville. Getting the best deal on the best tires with the best service has never been easier. Just log on to ConleyTire.net, check out the latest rebates, sales, and promotions, pick out the tires you want, and email, call, or come by. For huge savings from the family who's been proudly serving the area for over 32 years. Conley Tire in Staffordsville, 297-2424. Times have changed. Now and suddenly, more than ever. 
Our lobbies might be closed, but the Sagersville National Bank wants to remind our customers that we're still here, we're still working, to provide our community with as many services as possible. During this time especially, we encourage all of our customers to take advantage of all the options we offer to manage your accounts from the convenience of your home. 24-hour internet banking and bill pay, 24-hour telephone banking, remote deposit, automatic loan payments and wire transfers are also still available to our customers. And we're still here during our normal hours. Mondays through Fridays, the main drive through is open from 8 until 3, and the branch drive through is open from 8 until 5, and the branch drive through is also open on weekends, Saturdays 8 until noon, with ATMs available 24-7 at both locations. Car accidents don't stop. Accidents at work don't stop. Disability and SSI cases don't stop. Your legal needs and concerns don't stop for the coronavirus, and neither does McFarland and Tinker. They are open, able to schedule appointments per CDC guidelines, and always available for telephone and video conferences. Please, be safe, be smart, stay home, and don't let your legal needs fall victim to the pandemic. Call McFarland and Tinker and let them take care of them for you. Lastly, a couple of things COVID-related and then your Looking Valley RECC outlook. No press release today, but the governor's office did provide us with numbers saying that there was 203 new cases of the coronavirus in Kentucky today, bringing us close to the 13,000 case mark. Also, seven new deaths reported today, bringing us to 512 Kentucky lives lost. Of those seven deaths, one was a 72-year-old man from Allen County, 77, 80-year-old, a 74, and 89-year-old, also a 43-year-old man, and a 68-year-old woman from Boone County. That's the second time in just the past few days that we have discussed a Kentuckian in their 40s dying as a result of COVID-19. Uh, here in Sagersville, Public Health Director and Mayor Pete Shepard confirmed today a total of 733 McGoffin Countyans tested, 719 negative cases, 10 pending, and still those four cases as we've had for the past several days. Miami is not going to go into the next phase of reopening because of concerns about COVID-19. Although the majority of Florida is in phase two, Miami says they're putting the brakes on. Florida, one of 22 states in which new positive coronavirus, coronavirus cases have increased over the past 14 days. When the state came out of its stay-at-home order on May the 4th, they were seeing about 680 cases a day yesterday they saw 2,581. Well, as I referred to at the top of the program, we've got an upper level low. We've got some heat. That's to our east. We've got heat to our west. Uh, they're kind of working against or with each other, however you want to look at it. The end result is, and the main point is, is that we're going to see milder temperatures again tomorrow. We've got some shower chances coming, and then the heat will win in the end. So as a result of that, looking through your Licking Valley outlook, a 54 degree low tonight, continued mostly cloudy skies and dry conditions with a light northeasterly wind, maybe anywhere between 0 to 6 miles per hour. And another day in the 70s, actually a couple of days in the 70s staring at us, mid-70s for your Wednesday. We will see cloudy skies tomorrow and a daytime high of around 76 Isolated showers before 10, uh, and then maybe a little better chance, I guess I should say, up until about 3 or so, to the tune of 10 to 20%. That's about it. Not a big chance, not a big window either. But cloudy skies. That mass of moisture just kind of sitting over there to our east, just kind of swirling around, just trying to get to the viewing area, and not. But by Thursday, better chances. We actually have partly sunny skies around 78 Thursday and a 50% chance of showers and thunderstorms mainly after one. Shower chances will increase to maybe 60% or so uh, as the rest of Thursday evening goes on with a low of 60 degrees. Maybe some thunderstorms, otherwise a tenth of an inch for anyone that gets in on any rain. Friday, mostly sunny, and then we get back to the 80s. 82, a 40% chance of showers and storms, mainly after noon or 1 o'clock or so Friday. Mostly sunny again, and then mostly clear Friday night with about a 20 dwindling percent chance of showers and thunderstorms before 10 o'clock or so. And for your weekend... Clear, sunny, and warmer. 87 and sunny for your Saturday. Lows will bottom out at around 65 under partly cloudy skies Saturday night. Sunday, ditto for the temperature at least and mostly sunny conditions, but a 30% chance of showers and thunderstorms 
starting after 11 or noon. That increases to about a 40% by Sunday evening, and that night we'll see a low of 67 degrees. Starting off next week, partly sunny, 85, a 50% chance of showers and storms Monday. Tuesday, still close to the mid 80s, it's partly sunny and still a 50% chance of some more showers and storms. It's going to wrap it up for tonight. McGoffey County Fiscal Court met this evening. I have a camera there, a report to follow tomorrow, and other local news that you'll only see here. Good night, and thanks for being a part of the show.